<laughs> oh, Mr. Red here on a beautiful, gorgeous February the 18th, uh, 2023 day. It's about 55 degrees today. Just picked up a couple of packages over at the post office here at the Abbey. And today we are going to get to do another beehive review and this one is from once again the Vivor company let's get inside we'll set up open them up show you what kind of goodies are in this box and trust me there's some nice goodies in this box and by the grace of God we're gonna get these things put together and I might even have the graces to be able to give you a good description on account of what these Vivor beehive boxes are all about let's get inside and wrangle up some bee boxes But before we get into the unboxing of our beehives, time for me to make a little personal appeal to you. So I'm holding in my hand a bunch of letters. <laughs> and on these letters, or in these letters, I should say, people have sent me their labels to their honey. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Send me, please, a label from your honey and the way you can send it to me I'll leave a description in the video of my address where you can send it to here at the Abbey so that I can get it to you and these are these are just some of them that I've gotten and let me show you just a, a few of them that that I've received and this one it's uh, from Joe Cemento in Bayou New Jersey is his honey label uh, got one from from another Joe, Joe Elam, and these are Joe's labels. Let me show you one more. And this one is from Flower Street Forms in Lakewood, Ohio. They actually sent me a few of them. Look at that. That's gorgeous. And here's one of their labels. Oh, and look how pretty this one is. Wow. Wee. <laughs> so thank, thanks to all who have already sent me their labels. Um, I, I, that's, that's so wonderful. Because what I plan on doing with the labels is one of the areas in our honey house, I'm going to start applying all these labels uh, to the wall just to show off the different honeys from all around the country hopefully from the world, and I can't do that on my own, so that's up to you to, if you'll get involved and help me do that uh, to decorate the, the um, Abbey Honey House. So, if you do that, check out the description for the mailing address. Now let's go ahead and open up these boxes. Because I've already done a, one of the a reviews on one of the Vigor Beehives already, I, I probably wouldn't have done another one. However, um, when they, when they asked if I would do this one, because the features on this one, uh, so they, they, they've given us more options on, on this particular hog, that I thought it, it, it would be worthy to, to put it in uh, for your consideration. Um, if you're a beginning beekeeper, or heck, even if, even if you've been keeping bees for a long time, because some of the options on, on this particular hog may interest you. So let's go ahead and open up the first box which is going to be the basically the, the kit itself. All right. Well, <laughs> um, it it is a little bit shuffled up in here. Let me grab the camera and show you what I'm looking at. The first thing that I noticed was how all the frames here kind of like shuffled all around. Uh, not, not too, they, they're not bound together. Um, and then the next thing I noticed was a book. And uh, I guess it's telling you how to assemble your beehive. 
Yep. I think that pretty much people can figure that out, but there's the book. But this is this is the other thing that really caught my eye. Look at this. These are wax coated, and they're, it, they say it's beeswax coated um, boxes, which is a big improvement. Not only not only are they the wood that these are constructed of is cedar, which I'm a great big fan of cedar. Um, it, it's just it's just a a great bee wood. Uh, I do see that these things, some of the, these boards are glued together. I don't know what kind of glue they used in that gluing process. Um, hopefully it was a, a water resistant type glue. Um, but I mean, just looking at this, that's very, very, very nice. And in this kit, they included a, a deep and a medium or a honey super right here. So let's pull this out. And the next thing, let's move some of these frames out of the way. Because they, as you see, they've got two different sizes of frames um, for the deeps and for the supers. So consequently, the frames for our the frames themselves this one will be for the meat the honey super and this one will be for the deep supers let's get these out of the way so we can dig a little bit deeper it would seem like they could have put a rubber band <laughs> around this stuff keep everything kind of in solid one piece. All right, so let's remove our foundations. Now, the other thing that I, I, I see, I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick this up, but I can feel it. These foundations are wax coated. That's a big deal right there. Um, I'm not saying that the coating is gonna be sufficient enough. Well, for my purposes, it never would be, but uh, it, this probably is going to be sufficient enough for bees to get on it and draw it out. So not only are the honey foundations done, but so are the brood foundation, the deeps. They're wax coated as well. Another big plus. Because it, if you're going to put your foundations in, in your hive, it's best that you're going to uh, have it wax coated. The bees... They, they draw the comb out funny. Sometimes they don't actually attach it to the foundation um, if it's not coated with wax or they just won't even draw it out. They don't like the plastic foundation. And so if you, you have to almost put wax on it to get them to draw it out properly and good. Next thing we come across is some more loose frames. So let's move these out the way. Uh, a solid bottom board, and this as well is wax coated. Very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. <laughs> I've really, the bees have shown me uh, a solid bottom board. They prefer those. Uh, the vented screen bottom boards, which are all of mine, are. Um, they have a function, I suppose, but I, I, I think bees prefer solid bottoms. They, they want that complete darkness. And they can regulate the airflow in their hives. They do it in a tree, so they can do it in a hive as well. The next thing, we have some more sides for our boxes. But here you go. Look at this. This little treat right here. Look at this. They include a observation window for your hive right there and uh, hopefully they've included some plexiglass to, to cover that hole because right now whoop, you can stick your hand right through it all right that will be the honey this will be your deep and let's see there you go they've got this look at the wax build up right here they, they got that really coated so these are your observation ports. Ah, these are the little pieces of wood to 
close on the hive to keep that port closed. A waxed, a waxed inner cover. Very nice. Another loose frame. A queen excluder. Look at that. Really nice waxed telescope and cover. Very nice, very nice. And then on the bottom we have our rest of our frames, the top bars and the bottom bars. But I still have not found the plexiglass that goes into them. And it may not be in this box, maybe it's in the other box. But Maybe I'll find it later and I can show it to you then. All right, let's go ahead and assemble all of this stuff right here. Now let's start by <laughs> assembling our, our deep boxes. I did forget to mention another detail on these Vivor boxes that I do like is how they use uh, a dovetail joint instead of a finger joint on their boxes. And all a dovetail joint is, is your one sides look like this, and the part that mashes into them, they look like this. So it's a dovetail joint. And these are great joints, great joints. And as a woodworker, I, I, I definitely like them. Now, one, one issue that I found already um, with, with the, the hives, particularly the hive bodies, um, is in fact there is no plexiglass that goes behind this observation port. So it's, it's in my opinion, silly because you're going to have to wear uh, a bee suit if you want to observe your, your bees. And then the other thing that uh, I find silly is that the port is on the side of the box instead of the front or the back, which you won't be able to observe the bees until they draw out the 10 frames. Uh, and then that may take who knows how long before you'll actually even see bees at that point. So in my opinion, this, this observation port right here, eh, I don't, I don't, it's not, a, it's not anything I'm, I'm impressed about. Uh, another thing that I'm not impressed about as a woodworker, I always am checking lengths, widths, and always making sure that when I, when I put a box together, I want to make sure all four sides, or at least the two opposing sides, are the same length, width, everything. And so I always do a quick check on it. And when I, when I ran the check on this box, and all I do is I put them together, and then I just put my finger inside. And if I'm flush on both ends, well, that piece is the same same length. Flip it over, same on the sides. They're the same, same width. So that these two pieces are cut the same. When I went to measure this one, the long side, and I put them together, and I checked them, this one right here is actually longer than this one right here. And so... There's no way that this box is going to be square to begin with because one of the four sides is not the same. Well, one of the two sides is not the same as the other side, which means you're going to get a racking effect. So it's not going to be square. No matter what you do, this box would never be square. Now, how much that's going to affect it, um, you know, once I set it on the hob and put the other one on top and the alignment of it, I, we'll find that out. But... I can tell you right now, it's not going to um, be perfect. And one of the, the things that are good reasons of, of, of a dovetail is that when you use a dovetail joint, the box comes out basically square to, to begin with because the, the way the joint is cut, the box almost has to always become 90 degrees in each corner just by the nature of that cut. So given the discrepancy in these parts right here. Let's go ahead and put this box together. And you do have to make sure 
that you keep the outside of the boxes to the outside. That's the, the, the really important part. It's easy for the, for the um, front and the back because you have handles, so you know that the handle part will go on the outside. And then on, on the two sides, you, they, they put their logo on the outside of this one. They do a laser etching on that. And so you know that's the outside. And you just match it up to find out the other side. And so there you go. So we're going to go ahead and hammer this thing together. Oh, so after I hammer together, what I use, let me show you what I use. I use a two inch ring shank galvanized nail. Let me show you that. And this is, this is what it looks like. It's two inches long and you can see the shanks, the rings on the shank right here. That, um, that when that nail goes into the wood, those rings actually grip hold of the wood and prevent that, that nail from working itself out. Also, because I'm shooting this with a gun and not just hammering it in, there's a coating on a glue coating on these nails, and that glue coating will actually glue the nail in. So I love shooting. I love shooting my boxes with that two-inch ring shank galvanized nail. It's 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 a good combination for this. It takes a little uh, time to be able to hold your gun to shoot it, but it really does work real well. So we're going to go ahead and assemble the box. Once the box is assembled, then we'll go ahead and shoot it. So with both of our sides, all four of our sides being on the proper side, let's go ahead and put it together. And the way it's done is simply the joints, the finger joints, the dovetail joints, are just going to mesh into the other side. And that's all it is. So to do this, we're going to hammer our side into the other side. See how that works? With this, since they've got this beeswax on it, the coating on it, I know it's going to be difficult. So you need to get it in there, begin to get it in there, and then tap it down. in there very very nice see that that's both sides of it dovetail is a great joint and with our first side on let's go ahead and put the other side on you start inside the joint just a little bit go. That's three sides joined together. Now you're going to flip it over. And repeat. Start the joint coming together. Tap it in. So I guess I got it on the wrong way. over and make sure we put it in the right way. Good thing you all never saw that. <laughs> now before we hammer this one all the way down, we're going to go start this side. split the board. Now, get it all locked. 
locked in. The truth, you probably don't even need to shoot this, but I'm still going to shoot it. We can hold this up. There it is. That box is assembled. Let's grab our square and see how square it is. And we run it up to the inside. And you can see it's definitely out. So you, there is some ability to, to move it. So at this point, right there, my box is pretty much as square as I'm going to be able to get it. Remember, it's out of square because the sides aren't the same. So we're going to pretty much try to get it 50-50 out of square, like that. Now at this point right here, I'm satisfied that it's square enough and tight enough that we can now shoot it with our air gun. So let's get our gun and shoot this box. Hook up our air. And what we're going to do is shoot our nail into this edge of the wood right here on both sides. Flip it over and do the same. it over and I'm not even going to shoot nails in this front part there's so many knots in this wood I'm afraid that that nail is just going to blow them out so I believe the 16 nails that we have in there already that's going to be enough to hold this box all right, <laughs> I was done. Let's go do the other one. I've got both of our hot parts put together and it did not make that much difference as far as that bottom box being out of square and the alignment of it. Uh, it's a little off, but it's not enough. The bees won't mount. And I did, did mount <laughs> these observation ports uh, uh, they're pretty useless, but I put them in there and, and I sealed them pretty much because I'll never use that, that's for sure. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thought, but as far as a feature, it's pretty much useless in my opinion. I got these two done, and I know there's another one in that other box. Let's go ahead and open up that other box and, and look what's inside of that. Here we go. Let's open up this one and see the goodies inside of it. Right, there you go. Starting out about the same. A little broken piece of a frame. The booklet on how to do it. Loose frames, parts. Well. We've got a lot of sawdust on our foundations with the wax that's coated on it as well so that sawdust likes to stick on that wax so I'm going to have to blow that off. More frame parts. Oh look, a little window holders. That two saw a front and a back. Frame parts. And our two sides with an observation port on it as well. So this is the outside. Again, these are glued up boards. You can see your glue line right here, right here, right here, right here. I'm not a big fan of gluing up pieces uh, for bee boxes because you never know when that is going to, that glue is going to give way and that box will just break right along that seam. But they are wax coated and our frames are wax coated. Now we got that out the box. Let's go ahead and assemble that box right there.
all of our hot bodies are now assembled, and I got to say, I'm I'm just not really that impressed about the milling of of these joints. Remember when I told you that if you're not careful, you can split your boards as you hammer them down. Well, the milling was I, it wasn't done very well because what happened on the alignment on these on the, the back part right here that these joints did not align properly they were off and so you have I had to beat them in otherwise I had to file them down they were out maybe a sixteenth uh, but that sixteenth can compound on you and what happened was I started at one end and trying to make it fit I got it to go and then I just forced it and it, by forcing it I actually split the box at this point, at this point, and at this point. And that's because the milling wasn't, wasn't done properly. The, they did not align right. No matter what would have happened, unless I would have had to rework the joint itself, you, you, it would have split. Now you can see it a little bit better. How that, there's so much pressure in here. And then bam, it split right there right here and then right here as well and you can also tell that the, the joint isn't even flush see that it's not even flush on one end it's really bad let me see on this side look at look at look on this side. you see how much the joint sticks over yeah that's that's bad machining right there. And, but you know, when you're doing literally thousands of these things, I guess you can't expect to get it perfect. But if you're going to sell this stuff, you ought to get it perfect. I mean, that's, that's what production is all about. And with our boxes all constructed, it's time to move on to the frames. And it's already 3.15, and I'm going to head to the house. And tomorrow morning, I'll be back, and we'll put together some frames and close this review up. See you in the morning. Good morning. Day two of our review of the Vivor Beeswax Coated Beehive. And we're going to begin this day with frame assembly. Uh, over the, let's see, it was over Christmas. Charlie and I spent probably about 30, 30 plus hours. We assembled eight hundred frames for our, our honey supers and to aid us in that job because we certainly didn't want to build 800 frames one at a time I went and I built a fixture a fixture to hold the frames as they're being built now this fixture I found out how to build it by watching my, my buddy JC, Jason Chris, Chrisman, on his channel, JCBs. Uh, he, he did a review on, oh, not a review, but a, a video on how to build frames. And this particular fixture that he used, um, he gave the, the link to where he got that from. And let's see if I can remember. It was from bsource.com, I believe is the name of that site. Regardless, I'll put that site um, in the description of this video so that if you all want to build one of these fixtures, you can do it. But thanks, JC, for that, uh, that link and then for me to uh, be able to go to it and it gives all the dimensions and everything on how to build this fixture. And it's a, it's a 10, fr uh, 10 frame fixture. And simply, what it simply does is, wait, let me grab some frames some parts our side frames uh, they they slide into a slot on the side of it and you load up your ten side pieces on it and then once you have ten frames loaded up you grab your tension bar which is held together by door springs one on each side and you paint you lock it in place, and by doing that, now your your frames, side frames, boom, they get locked in, and they're held in place. 
the, I followed the measurements exactly. The only modification that I did on this fixture was to extend the ears, when I say ears, the sides of the part that puts the tension on it so that you can get a position to hold on to this side and, and move it. Uh, the way they did it, it was flush and it's very difficult. So I just added about an inch and a half on each side. But other than that, it's it's the same uh, box that, that or fixture that they used. Now, one other thing that I would recommend uh, for you to do, if you're going to build assemble boxes, frames, you need to get yourself or make yourself one of those. Something that, that can rotate so that you're not rotating the box or the fixed or whatever, that you just rotate the whole stand and it makes it so much easier. And it, they're very simple. You just go to Home Depot and you get yourself a Lazy Susan. They come in all different sizes and all it does is it's two circles with bearings mounted in them and they just rotate around and there's screw holes in them to, uh, to mount to two different on top and the bottom and then that enables the whole fixture to turn. So that the, the Lazy Susan is a great idea um, if you're going to be doing any, any kind of assembly. So let me go ahead and show you the, the way I, I, I lay these things out because after after doing 800 of them, Charlie and I got to be pretty good at it. And as far as to speed things up, we, we had the process down. So let me show you what we got down here. What I found was if I kept all of my pieces in groups of 10, because that's what our fixture is set up to do, it sped the whole process up. So our sidebars are, are arranged uh, 10, another 10, 10, and another 10. Um, our top bars, there are 10 here, and our bottom bars, 10 right here. And we have everything lined up. So as we would go, we would just grab a group and put the box together. It really does um, speed the process up um, when you have everything already set up, laid out, where you're not counting as you go. Do that all at one step, and you'll get it done. Now, if you only have 10 or 20 of them to do, that's no big deal. But when we had 800 to do, trust me, it, it was a lot faster doing it that way. Now, what we're using to assemble the frames is this stapler right here. And this stapler shoots uh, quarter inch uh, staples. And these are the staples that I use. And they're uh, inch and a quarter long and they're quarter inch wide. This is this is exactly what they look like. You get your side frames. You're going to want to apply glue here at the top and here on the bottom of it. And sure, you could take your bottle and boom, boom, put glue right there. Put your bottle down, spread it, spread it. Put more glue, spread it, spread it, and set it on the side. It works. It works great. But I'm interested in, in doing a lot of them quickly. So to do that, and we always, because our, our fixture right here is set up to do 10, then that's how I want to do 10 of them. So what I do is I, I made up basically a squaring jig. And all it is is a flat table with a 90 degree on it with a stop. And what I do is you take 10 of your frames and you're going to line them up. But you see, they don't line up real good like that. So what you want to do is you want to line them up. And to do that, you throw them against your stop, this stop right here. And to make sure they're nice and square, bring them to the edge. Make, make sure everything is touching along this edge right here, on here. You know it's square. Bring it up and look at that. Look how straight all those things are. They're all in line on the top and the bottom. Now we're ready to put our glue on it. Since we're ready, let's go ahead and put our glue. And what I use, I use Type Bond 2. I, I love this, this glue. Type 2 or Type 3 Type Bond. It's, it's good because it's water resistant. So this is stuff I always use for all of our bee stuff. And I just put a little bit 
on the crack. You don't want to really put too much because you don't want that glue traveling all around when you're pushing your pieces down. Spread your glue, and I use the brush to do that. Spread it nice and evenly. And there you go. All nice and even. I'll ten of them done really quick. Flip it over, do the same on the back side. All right, done. Ten of them. It took a tenth of the time to do one of them. Now since we already got it, let's go ahead and go ahead and put it in our fixture. And the way it's done is you take your, your pieces, right in camera, there you go, and we're just going to drop them into our slot. Now, the only thing that you have to make sure of is when you put your sidebars in there, you want to make sure they're all touching each other like this. So at that way, we know they're going to be square, at least square to the other side. And then once they're in place, we just lift up our tension bar, boom, and put it in place. Nice, straight, and true. So now let's go ahead and load up the other side. With our side bars all loaded up, it's time to start applying, putting our top bars in. And oh, look, in case you were wondering what this tape was, I had glued that piece of wood that I found in the box. I glued it back on there so it's, the glue's dried. And once we get our top bars, we just put them in our notches. And this part does require a little bit of adjusting on it. Because these bars do fit tight in the frames. Now once of our bars in. Quick tap to make sure that they're seated. Now we're going to nail them. And when I nail them, what I am doing is I'm shooting a, a staple right in this area right here. So it's, it's between these two ears right here, these two shoulders. The staple goes right there and we're going to shoot all 10 of these frames one on each side all right so we've now we've shot our staples in the top I I bothered to make sure none of my staples shot out <laughs> Uh, out of the 800 did, I probably hit 40 of them that the staple shot out. And these are all fine. These are fine. So now this is, this is the, really the nice part about this fixture. We've, we've stapled the top part of, of our top bars to our side bars. And now all we have to do is turn our fixture over and shove down. And our frames pop up on the other side, allowing us now to put it in our bottom bar. So let me grab those and we're going to put those in. Now it's time to staple these as well. Now this time, we're stapling the bottom of our staples, so as the bottom board went in to our side frame, 
this is the area that we are going to now shoot our staple. So it'll go through the bottom bar and into the side bar and it'll lock it in place. Another no miss on that one either. So there's only one thing now we got to do and that is to shoot one more staple and this time we're going to be shooting a staple on the bottom side of that top bar and that will then prevent when we're trying to lift our frames out of our B boxes from that top bar separating from the side bar. By shooting a staple through the side of that right there it locks it in and so we shoot one on each side on this side and on this side. Let me grab a, a, a frame and show you what I'm talking about. As our frame is now constructed and we have we shot a staple through the top part right here and that went all the way through the side bar right here, we are now on the underneath side of the bar, the frame, we're going to shoot a staple at this point right here driving the staple into this part of the frame right here and that prevents this from happening because now we have a piece of metal that going through there and it won't it won't allow that to happen now that all of our staples have been shot into the frames it's time to remove the frames from the fixture and it starts by taking off our tension bar from the frames and then it's really tight in there so I, I use a pusher board to help me push all those frames out These are the two side bars that keep all the frames together. There you have it. Look at that, huh? All right, let me finish up these other 20 right here. With all of our frames now being assembled, <laughs> there's just one thing left to do, and that's to drop in our foundation. And that process is so simple. You just press the, put the foundation at the bottom. Press the bottom in, and that is it. Frames are assembled, foundations are in, the box is assembled. Let me give you my final comments on this Vivor Beehive. Before I give you my final opinion <laughs> on, on the hive, uh, I first will tell you that um, you saw the two boxes that it came in. Uh, one of the boxes contained the bottom board, a deep super, the 10 frames, the inner cover, the queen excluder, and the telescope and cover. And so that's, that's like a, 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 a kit, a beginner beehive kit. And that, that one, uh, it, it costs $132. And 
I was told that um, the, if I listed the promotion code for it, and that's, that'll be in the video, that until March the 16th, that you could receive a 10% discount on that. The second, the second box was simply a deep super with 10 frames in it with the foundations that were waxed. And that one super and the 10 frames with the wax foundations was $53. And again, like the, the kit, they offered a, a discount, but this one is to March the uh, 16th on that one um, and you get a 10% on that and I'll, I'll include the codes and the, and the dates of the um, the coupon is going to be uh, valid so that's the the cost of it now my overall my overall view of a, of a hive this hive right here it is not favorable I I would not recommend this hive to a beginner because of the issues involved that I had with it that when you pay that kind of money for a hog you don't expect to have any of that kind of stuff and the the, the problems I, I ran into primarily were um, the machining of the the boxes the joints I love the dovetail joints I love the beeswax I'm coating on it but the joints were misaligned they didn't line up so consequently I don't know if you even noticed when I was doing the putting in the frames I the box was so out of square that I could not even get the frames into it so that and it wasn't it wasn't because of the, the box just simply being out of square it was out of square and out of alignment uh, it, it it really was not not good um, the other thing that I'm really disappointed in is the fact that they use glue joints in your boards I don't think that is a good idea at all the overall craftsmanship in this box is very very low in my opinion uh, yes they have a couple of nice qualities about it um, I was really wanting to see this observation so I thought that would be an interesting aspect to include and, and it's absolutely useless in my opinion because there is no plexiglass or covering over it to keep the bees in. So you open it up and the, the bees just fly out. It, it's, it's silly in my opinion. So would I recommend this hive to anyone? Nah, not on this one. However, that, that last fever hive that I, I, I reviewed, it was great. I mean, it was, it was cedar. It was solid one piece the, the the box went together smoothly this one in no way is in com is compared to that one equally it's just it's not so i'm sorry but this one isn't going to fly in my books and that's all i got for you this one so any of the descriptions uh, about the vid about the the box the how you can locate it it's all on amazon how you can locate it uh, all that stuff will be in the description of this video, as will be my address where you can send me your honey labels, as will be the source for the construction of that 10 frame frame assembler. So that's all I got for you this time. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching and I'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Ed. I'm out of here until the next video.